This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone, and I am Rob McConnell. We're still coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, studio at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV, and our main radio website at www.xzoneradio.com, where you can find out what we've been doing over the last 25 years, all the media that has covered us. Uh, video clips, audio clips, uh, toenail clips, who knows what else you'll find there. And that's at www.xzoneradio.com. Before I get to my guest for this hour, whose name is Josh Bernstein, um, quick question for you. How would you like to be part of UFO history? Well, if you would, there's one very simple way and a way that will help enrich a very worthwhile project. Just go to www.cubesatfordisclosure.com. That's www.cubesatfordisclosure.com. As I said, Exxon Nation, Josh Bernstein is our special guest. And, uh, you know, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden has suggested that o- the Obama administration uh, may launch a retaliatory cyber strike against Russia in response to what Washington believers to be interference by Moscow in this well, how do we say it? Three-ring circus uh, election? Now, this week, the White House said the U.S. would respond in a proportional way to the attempt to interfere if the election and that sanctions and covert actions were under consideration. Do we as a nation have confidence in the current or future cabinet to protect us? Well, is this a decision that gamers um, may want more information on? And what would be the impact? Josh Bernstein is uh, with us. Uh, He has been seen on many national uh, radio and TV stations and publications. He is a political analyst, commentator, and national spokesperson, well-known conservative columnist and strategist, and he's also a poetry enthusiast. Um, Here's my, my only poem that I know, Josh. Mary had a little lamb. She also had a duck. She put them on the windowsill to see if they would fall off. <laughs> I love your play on words there. That was good stuff right there. <laughs> Josh. Uh, and television host as well. As a matter of fact, I just came from the studio and we was recording uh, my weekly television show. So uh, I've got my hands in uh, a lot of different pots. Wow. First of all, thank you very much for uh, joining us here tonight, Josh. I sincerely appreciate you coming on the air. I know you're a man, a very, a very busy man, especially with what is going on in the world today, especially in the United States. But listen, tell me about the um, your, your spokesman for, I believe yeah. it's the um, AMAC. Tell us about that. Sure. It's called uh, AMAC.US. It is mm-hmm. the Association of Mature American Citizens 
we are a conservative alternative to AARP, and uh, we have about 1.3 million members, and we're growing stronger each and every day. And we're a seniors-based organization for folks 50 years of age and older. And when we do lobby on behalf of the U.S. Congress uh, and Washington in Washington, D.C., it is to provide more freedom, more choice, and more control for health care decisions for seniors. Uh, the U.S. government gave a 1.1% increase in federal pay and yet have not given a cost-of-living adjustment to seniors in America. And so we are working behind the scenes to get that cost-of-living adjustment for our American seniors. And if you want to learn more about us, you can check us out at amac.us. Again, www.amac.us. Now, I normally will also say that you can get a free membership uh, but the thing is, is I'm not sure how it works uh, with being in Canada and America. So if you would like, you can call 888-262-2006, 888-262-2006. You can call them up and ask them if you can still qualify for a free membership just by mentioning my name, Josh Bernstein, and that you heard me on the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell. Wow, that's great. Um Josh, please stand by. We've got to take a short break. When we come back, let's get in. Let's roll up the sleeves. Let's get the um, belly boots on because we're going to be stepping in some political crap, I'm sure. Exonation. Josh <laughs> Bernstein is my very special guest. And uh, the website that we'd like you to go to tonight, Exonation, www.amac.us. That's www.amac. Dot us. I'm Rob McConnell. Josh Bernstein is my special guest. We'll both be back on the other side of this short break. Don't go away. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers a certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th. Registration deadline is September 12th. 
Experience Journey Trance, Power Animals, Helping Spirits, Sacred Space, and Life Purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Josh Bernstein is our special guest. And uh, Josh, thanks so much for coming on the show. But I have to ask you something. As somebody who uh, is very savvy in the world of politics in the United States, what do you, as an American citizen, um, think about what's going on between Donald Trump, the media, Hillary Clinton, the emails, the FBI, the servers, and the list goes on and on and on? (laughs) Well, it, it certainly has made for some very good political theater, to, mm-hmm. to say the least. Um, I think that it's a clear choice for America. Uh, and, you know, this election is really not about right versus left. Uh, it's not about liberalism versus conservatism. It, it's not about Republicans versus Democrats. It's really, on a cerebral level, it's about nationalism versus globalism. And you have one candidate in Donald Trump that wants to put the United States of America first. And you have another candidate in Hillary Clinton that wants to put America last. And if you look at her record as Secretary of State, she has a record of putting America last and or selling America's interest out to the highest bidder. So I personally think it's a very clear and distinct choice for Americans to make. We also are now getting information pertaining from WikiLeaks, uh, as well as a amazing investigative journalist who I've had the pleasure of having on my program named James O'Keefe. He's the founder of Project Veritas. Mm -hmm. He has come out and has proven, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, lots of different corruption and collusion and voter fraud videos. And so that's really exploding right now. Uh, in in the American hemisphere, if you will, and what we're looking at uh, on the Drudge Report and on the news. But we also know that our media here in America, your normal alphabets, your ABC, CBS, NBC, even Fox, for that matter, and CNN and MSNBC, they are all corrupted and colluded with not only the Barack Obama administration, but the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, as well as other progressive leftist groups. Uh, And so we're working very hard and diligently on exposing all that in time for the election. By the way, I must tell you at this point, when it comes to Donald Trump, I openly support him uh, as president of of the United States, even though I'm not an American. What happens Mm -hmm. in the United States does affect Canada. And I, as a Canadian, want to see... Donald Trump as president of the United States of America. And I've said this openly on air, and I have criticized mainstream media in the U.S. for being so biased. It, it's sickening. Thank you. We appreciate it, and we need more people to do exactly that, because you are correct. Uh, look, Donald Trump may not be perfect, and yep. he may have said some, some things, and he mm-hmm. speaks uh, in a brash tone, but the bottom line is he wants to put America, and for that matter, you could say, I guess, the uh, you know the the Western you know world yep. uh, as far as uh, Europe and mm-hmm. Canada and Mexico and the United States he wants to put us all in a better position for prosperity and freedom uh, and again as I've said many many times this is an election about nationalism versus globalism and the globalists are running scared they saw what happened with Brexit and uh, Brexit was the uppercut that they didn't see coming through the gloves. And a Trump victory is the knockout blow, and that's why they are throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, at Donald Trump. But we'll see what happens. We've got 20-something days to go here, and uh, mm-hmm. I believe all the polls are wrong, and I believe that Donald Trump is clearly ahead. And uh, hopefully the people will turn out, and uh, we'll have a great victory for the Northern Hemisphere. You know, um, everybody is pointing to Donald Trump, and and yet I remember... The Kennedys had a lot of dirty laundry as well. You know, not only before he was in the White House, but while he was in the White House. Then you had the the stories about Bobby, and then you had what 
what happened with Teddy Kennedy. You know, and it seems all this is forgotten. And, and yet, once again, Richard Nixon, Watergate, and the list goes on. So, so if the media was to attack Richard Nixon and the Kennedys the way they're attacking Donald Trump, because in my opinion, he's not going to take the bull crap. He's right. not going to be bought. He's not going to play right. favoritism. He's going to tell it the way it is because I believe that he is for the American people. And when you look at what he's done over the years, what he's accomplished, my God, you need a business person to run a country because a country is a business. And, exactly. you know, looking at his track record, my God, he is what the United States in my opinion, needs. And in fact, if we could clone him, I would love to have Donald Trump too running Canada. Absolutely. I was just going to say, you know, you you guys uh, elected a young, charismatic socialist. No, 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 no. Hold on. Former... Hold on. Hold on. We elected an idiot. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say something about your premier, and I didn't want you to get all upset, but... Uh, Justin Trudeau is oh. nothing but a globalist socialist. Uh, he has no experience. He's going to yeah. open the floodgates to Canada. You know, I always joke around and say that not only do we need to build the wall on the southern border mm -hmm. against Mexico, but we're going to need to build one up on the north because of Trudeau yep. allowing all the uh, Muslim extremists into Canada. And that, uh, that is so true. That is so true. And the worst part is, is that Canadians are, 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 are livid about it because we are watching what is happening in Europe. We're watching what's happening in the United States. You know, so far we've only had one attack, and that was in Ottawa. So far, mm -hmm. I say. But, you know, I remember right. the, 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 um, the sales pitch that the United Nations tried to to give everyone the sales pitch that, you know, that Hillary Clinton gave uh, in, in bringing in the Syrian refugees and Trudeau. Listen, I agree that people need to live and they need to live safely. I agree with that 100%. Nobody should have to suffer the, the, um, the pains of war. But I had a very simple question that I tried to ask a member of parliament, and I got totally ignored. My question was, well, why don't we bring them to a place, the, the, the refugees, to a place that is safe in northern Africa, put them up in a, in a refugee Amen. center, and fight the fight, win it, then ship them back to their own homes? Exactly. This is nothing more than an infiltration of Western Europe. Yep. It is an infiltration of Canada, and yep. God forbid it would be an infiltration of the United States. The bottom line is most of these, quote, Syrian refugees mm -hmm. are not from Syria. They're from Egypt. They're from Iran. They're from Iraq. They're from Libya. They're from Yemen. They're from Afghanistan. They're from Pakistan. They're from all over the place, not just Syria. As a matter of fact, I believe 35% or less are from actually Serious. So I would agree with you that we do need to have yeah. uh, a safe, safe zone, safe havens, if you will, set up outside of the confines of the war and, and where the fighting is going on. Go in there, clear out the rat's nest. Yep. Once the rat's nest is cleared out, you allow the people to go back, because I'm sure there's a lot of those folks that were upended, uprooted. They want to go back to their familiar surroundings and their countries and, and be around the people that they love and that they've known mm -hmm. and have grown to be with their whole lives. They don't necessarily want to come to a completely strange com country. Yep. So again, this is more of how do you then infiltrate Western Europe to bring on more globalism? Well, you force them to allow these people into their countries, which then changes the overall dynamics of the country over time. And, you know, something that Canada, the United States, and Western Europe has a major problem with is that we have an issue in birth replacement. And right now, if you look at the 30 or so countries that are left in the European Union, their average birth replacement rate is 1.3. My God. In order for a, for a country and a society and a people to replicate and survive the next generation, mm -hmm. you need a minimum of a 1.8% birth replacement rate. 
Right now, Canada is less than 1.8. Canada, I believe, is at 1.5. The United States is exactly at 1.8, and the reason is because of the illegal immigration problem that we have uh, in the United States because they have more babies than, than white people. And so, therefore, they're keeping us up with the replacement rate numbers. But the bottom line, and when you look at Western Europe and you look at Germany and you look at Sweden and Denmark and, and Norway and, and all these Spain and France and all those places, they're, they're running 1.2 to 1.3. The Muslims are running 2.2 to 2.8. Wow. So what they can't do militarily, they'll wait 25, 30 years and outbreed us. Yep. That's exactly right. That's exactly Unfortunately, right. Unfortunately, it is. Why is it we can't talk the truth? That as soon as we start talking the truth, we're racist. We're Islam, you know, right. you know, we're we're everything but Americans and Canadians who also have the right of free speech. You're yeah. absolutely correct. And, you know, I always say this, you know, the left does not believe in freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. They believe in freedom of speech that they believe in. So if it's something that they don't believe in, therefore you can't say it. So it's selective freedom of speech yeah. that's coming from the left. I had a guest on last week, Josh, who lives in London, England. And I asked him, uh, I, I, I asked him, his name is Peter, and I said, Peter, the stories that we hear about Sharia law in London, are there parts of London and England where the police will not go in because of Sharia law? And I said, our media is downplaying that. And he said, that's because your media is lying. They've been told to lie by the British government. Yes, that is yep. true. It is absolutely true. It's yep. called no-go zones where they've actually set up their own churches, or their own mosques, I mm -hmm. should say, uh, their own legal system, and all these little enclaves that are in France. We saw that uh, the, uh, the people that uh, did the shootings and yep. killed all those hundreds of people in France, they were part of the enclaves where they didn't go in, they didn't monitor, they didn't uh, destroy the rat's nest of terrorism in their own cities and their own countries. So, yes, this is still going on. I just saw images and videos of France right now. France looks like a war zone. Yep. You've got people literally living on mattresses on the side of, you know, where the French quarters are and, and right. where all the, you know, beautiful uh, the Eiffel Tower yep. and, and some of the other places are. It's a disaster. And I don't want Canada to be, to be like that. I'm sorry if that, if, if that makes me a racist because I want to protect my country. What can I say? I call myself a Canadian. Like, I, I can't understand why we're letting all these refugees in when there are so many Canadians who are homeless, so many Canadians who are hungry, so many Canadians who need jobs, so many Canadians who, who need the help of the government, who just can't get it, and yet the government opens up its arms, open up wide, and says, come to Canada. Are you it, free? It's amazing. You know, assimilation, immigration, mm -hmm. without assimilation, is an invasion. That's right. And when people come into a new country and they refuse to learn the language and they refuse to stand by the cultures and, you know, what makes them an enriched society and country, yeah. instead they decide to stay by themselves and hate the host country and want to overtake and overthrow the host country. That's where we have the issue and that's where we have the problem. And Josh. Fortunately, that's why we have to have border walls. Josh, we've got to take a short break. Please stand by. Exonation. Josh Bernstein sure. is our special guest. www.amac.us. That's www.amac.us. And we'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't you dare go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, 
or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7-365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge, breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Exo Nation, uh, Josh Bernstein is our special guest. www.joshbernsteinpoliticalwriter.com is his website. And I guess to categorize what we're talking about this hour here in the Exo is the one hell of a mess that our good friends and neighbors to the United States are in with this election. And I must tell you, Josh, that I have never seen an election with so much mudslinging in all my life. But you know what really pisses me <laughs> off? is how one-sided the media is. I swear to God, yeah. CNN should be called Clinton News Network. That's what we call it here, either that or the Communist News Network. But well, let me ask you a question, because, sure. again, you're up there in Canada. Mm-hmm. Are you hearing from your media only stories about the 11-year-old tape and then these women that are coming in saying that, He's groping them. Or are you even hearing anything about the paper play with the Clintons? Are you hearing anything about the emails? Are you hearing anything about the Clinton Foundation and the collusion and the WikiLeaks? Are you hearing any of that? Well, we're or hearing is it all just about Donald Trump. No, we're hearing about the WikiLeaks. We're certainly hearing about okay. the email. We're certainly hearing about the Clinton Foundation. Uh, we're okay. we heard a little bit about the tapes. 
A little bit. You know, it was a kind of a flash thing. It wasn't repeated every 15 seconds like it is on the, the American networks. Um, Got it. I I think the Canadian media is doing a much better job of trying to do scaled uh, journalism where it's the scale of justice is is trying its very best to keep balanced when it comes to the reporting and the ethics being used by Mm -hmm. our Canadian journalists. But I, you know, like I'm telling you, the last time I watched as much American TV was during the O.J. Simpson trial. (laughs) And that was another sensational uh, time in our history, certainly. But, but tell me, in your uh, opinion, yeah, this, in your opinion, why isn't Hillary Clinton behind bars yet? Well, okay, uh, if you want, I'll give you the exact reason why she is not behind bars. I'll give it to you Please. word for word, in my opinion, Please. why she is still walking among us. Um, I just covered this, as a matter of fact, uh, today uh, on the show, so... I'm going to get to uh, some of my notes here real quick. Here we go. So in 2008, the Clinton campaign was basically beaten by a fraudulent Barack Obama. Barack Obama was able to use his ACORN ties, which is the group that Mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, doing voter fraud and things like that. He was able to use them to do some voter fraud in a couple of our big states and was able to just weasel out the nomination from Hillary Clinton. Now, when this happened, Hillary Clinton and the Clintons themselves basically were going to throw the riot act at Obama. And they said, we're going to tell you, we're going to tell all about all the different things as far as your birth certificate is concerned, your nationality, your religion, you name it, unless you make me secretary of state. Okay. Now, What happened is after 2008 and the Hillary Clintons got cheated out of the nomination, Mm -hmm. they learned a very valuable lesson from the Chicago uh, criminal machine that is the Obama administration, and they then paid it forward to the Bernie Sanders campaign, and they rigged their own uh, election for her nomination here in 2016 by paying off 33 state Democratic Party officials and getting the superdelegates all in line before even one vote was cast. So she learned a valuable lesson that way. But the Hillary campaign, again, was then obviously put into a situation where Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was now in that position. So she needed experience from her resume. She was a first lady, and she was a senator, but she didn't have the gravitas of being able to run in 2016, so he made her... Secretary of State. Now, the what the problem with the Barack Obama administration is that they didn't understand the depths of retaliatoriness, retali- retaliation, mm-hmm. as well as vengefulness of the Clintons. And when they put them in that position of power, being Secretary of State, the Clintons were going to be who the Clintons are, which are corrupt, lying, conniving swindlers. And so what they did is because Barack Obama was the president, they decided to continue to do the things that they do as far as collusion, as far as uh, corruption in in the Clinton Foundation, not using the proper email channels, all of that stuff. So they did all that criminal behavior. But what Obama didn't realize was that now, because she was his secretary of state, she could now take him down because he knew that she was doing it. So in order to insulate himself from the Clinton uh, Foundation and the Clinton email scandal, he had to appoint, uh, I'm sorry, keep James Comey, who was a longtime Clintonista from the 1990s, worked at the same law firm as Loretta Lynch and Hillary Clinton, and he had to appoint Loretta Lynch because he knew that Loretta Lynch was an old-time Clintonista. Then he used executive privilege to be completely out of the equation. So there was never going to be an indictment because Barack Obama knew that if there was an indictment, that he would also be taken down with the Clintons. Now, the only way that the Clintons and the Obamas or anybody else is going to face justice is through a Donald Trump Justice Department. It is another reason why Americans must go out and vote for Donald Trump so that we can hold 
the criminals accountable here in America. You know, when I was watching the uh, the Senate hearings or the congressional hearings, I forget which one it was, um, she was sitting there so smug, you know, and mm-hmm. she, it, to her, it, it seemed to me that she really didn't care, that she was above and beyond reproach. It was like, lady, how are you getting away with this? And then as the information slowly was able to get out about the Clinton administration, uh, the, sorry, the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton administration itself. You know, it's like double standards, big time. And, and how can the Clinton camp say anything negative about Donald Trump's um, past when, my God, Bill Clinton was having all his all his affairs smack dab in the White House, mm-hmm. caught by his wife. And this is so ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it just goes to show you how left-leaning our media is. They would rather concentrate on an 11-year-old tape between two guys having a locker room conversation about girls. Girls do the same thing, okay, as the guys do. Sometimes they're even more graphic. And yet they want to concentrate on that instead of the criminal behavior, the actual acts that have taken place. According to my calculations, uh... Famous judge Andrew Napolitano, Rudy Giuliani, former mayor and prosecutor in New York, and Judge Janine Pirro, also a TV personality and former district attorney in New York, uh, Chester County. We count that Hillary Clinton is guilty of a minimum, a minimum of 23 felonies and 18 misdemeanors. And if she was convicted on all of those, she would serve a life prison sentence without the possibility of parole. All right. The only person that's going to do that mm-hmm. is Donald Trump's Justice Department. Up here in Canada, we have something called a citizen's arrest. And in the Canadian Criminal Code, it states any person can arrest without a warrant, a person who they find committing an indictable offense. How come you guys don't have something like that down there? <laughs> you know what? I, honestly, I, I don't know. And I think that uh, the political will of the people, maybe they're just not paying attention. I mean, mm-hmm. they're paying attention, but... Uh, I think we just have collusion. We have collusion, both parties. I call it the global credit party of Washington because I believe both parties are guilty. And, you know, it brings me into Canada because you guys, not that you're guilty, but I'll tell you something that you guys have that we don't have. You have the ability on your laws to protect uh, foreign dignitaries and world leaders from having their names released uh, for donations and things like that. In Canada, I forget the name of the law, but there's a law in Canada. So you know what the Clintons did? They set up the Frank Geistra Clinton Enterprise in Canada because of those laws, so that the Saudis and the Omans and you know the Egyptians and everybody else could then send all that money into this quote charity in Canada called the Frank Geistra Enterprises, and then money launder it and wash yeah. it back into the Clinton Foundation into New York. How long has she been doing that for? At least 20 years. At least 20 years, if not longer. And you know if this? not longer. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. Yeah, you can look it up. Frank Geistra Enterprises. Frank Geistra was the former head of Lionsgate Entertainment, uh, which is a movie company that puts out lots of different mm-hmm. movies. Right. Uh, he's known uh, also as a uh, mineral dealer, uh, precious metals. Uh, He's actually gone to Kazakhstan with Bill Clinton and actually forced and worked out a deal and probably by force with the Kazakhstani president to sell the mineral rights. Uh, So that's one way that he got very, very wealthy and rich. He's also donated $30 million to the Clinton Foundation. And he's uh, he's one of those money men behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, and he's the one that set up the Frank Geistra Enterprises in Canada just to skirt the laws because of the Canadian laws mm-hmm. not allowing the disclosure of major donors. So tell me, how do you spell Geistra? Is it G-E-E-S-T-R-A? It is G-U-I-S-T-R-A, Geistra. All right, I'm going to give this... Geistra uh, Enterprises. I'm going to give this to my uh, research department and have them do some digging Absolutely. Tomorrow. And if you would like, yeah. I've done a story on it that has well over 100,000 views. Uh, I would be happy 
to email you and break it down exactly how they do the money laundering. If the Clinton Foundation w- was ever cracked, yeah. it would open up Pandora's box. It would not only bring down the Clintons and the Obamas, but it would also bring down the George W. Bush administration wow. and who knows how many others. It is the largest money laundering operation in U.S. history. I will tell you something, my friend. You get me that information, and I will get it out to as many people as I know in the Canadian media as well as the political realms. Good. Absolutely. I'd be more than happy uh, to do that. So Excellent. we'll talk off the air. You get, I'll get the email address sure. for you, and uh, you can do that for me. So. This is unreal. To think that two people like the Clintons wield so much power because of corruption. Absolutely correct. The when, most corrupt political mm-hmm. family in U.S. history by far. So no when one's did, even close. When did it change from we the people to why the Clintons? <laughs> you know, you have to understand who's behind the scenes. You, you have a push, a major global push. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got 13 families that basically run the world. That's not conspiratorial. That is for real. You've got the Rothschilds. You've got a bunch of others that literally are running everything. And they are the globalists that own all the banks. Uh, that's why they call them international banksters, the Bilderbergs, the Bohemian Grove folks. This is all stuff that's, that's for real. I mean, you can look it up yourself. It's not hearsay. It's not conspiratorial or tinfoil hat. This stuff is out there. And one of the main money mans is a guy named George Soros, Soros yeah. and his open society. And he, uh, he's been a financier. He's a convicted money manipulator. He's also a Nazi collaborator back in his youth. He actually helped uh, steal and uh, take away property from, from the Jews. And he's Jewish himself. This is a very, very bad, bad person. Let's, let's very talk bad about actor. him. Let's talk about him when we come back from this final break. Exo Nation, sure. uh, Josh Bernstein is my special guest. www.joshbernsteinpoliticalwriter.com. And uh, Josh and I will return as we wrap up this hour here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. As host of Dialogue with Divinity, I am thrilled to join the Exxon Broadcast Network and their growing number of affiliates. My quest for a connection to the divine ignited my successful career path as an international spiritual counselor for over 40 years, an author of four books, and well-known metaphysical educator. My clients call me their spiritual mama. So my job is to offer you a radio show to help you grow spiritually with wisdom and get specific tools from guests who are experts in their field. Tune in to Dialogue with Divinity and be part of the conversation with Spirit. My goal, your happy soul. For more information, please visit my website at johannacarroll.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. 
We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life is no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. Josh Bernstein is our guest, Exo Nation. Josh Bernstein, politicalwriter.com. Uh, Josh, let me uh, give you a hypothetical situation. November 8th comes along. Hillary Clinton is elected as president of the no. United States. How do you see, number one, Donald Trump accepting the, the, the nomination? And number two, do you think that there will be uh, civil unrest? I definitely think there will be civil unrest um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because the only way, and I'll repeat this, the only way that she can win mm -hmm. is through massive, and I mean massive, voter fraud. She does not have the numbers. She does not have the support. The Donald Trump campaign gets 25, 30,000 people packed into arenas that, you know, would yeah. sell out, you know, Elton John and rock concerts. 
and she can't fill a phone booth full of free Obama phones. Okay. So she, she gets into these little gyms with three, 400 people. And yet every poll, most polls in America are saying that she's winning and that she's way ahead. And this is all to suppress the, uh, Donald Trump's supporters to make them not go out and vote, to make them think that uh, she's, you know, so far ahead that he can't win. And you know what? If you look at history, and I'm sure that you know this as well, what the media has done in America, they did the exact same thing to Ronald Reagan. And they said Ronald Reagan would never win. Yeah. He's down in the polls. He's this, he's that. And we saw what happened. So uh, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic, that uh, he's going to pull this out. Um, I hope and pray that he is for my sake, for your sake, for future generations' sake. Because if he doesn't, uh, I can almost assure you there will be civil unrest. What about the fact that uh, that uh, she, following in the legacy of President Obama, wants to have a no-borders open Western Hemisphere? Global, uh, global open market. Uh, right. How would that affect things? Oh, it would be devastating. It would be devastating. I mean, we already are in a situation where there's 95 million Americans not in the workforce. Mm -hmm. It is the highest amount since 1977. We also have 50 million Americans on food stamps. Wow. We've got another 10 to 12 million Americans on disability, and most of that is because the 99 weeks of unemployment had run out. When the second largest job creator two years ago mm -hmm. was Kelly Temp Services, you know you have a problem because there's a lot of people that are working two, three, sometimes four jobs to make the same money that they would have made with one job before Barack Obama. He came in with a promise to fundamentally transform America, and he has done just that. And now we have an opportunity to start to unravel all of the damage. Why doesn't Donald Trump follow the advice of his campaign people and, uh, you know, kind of s stick to the topic, stick to what the people, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, the budget, the economy, um, world events? Why doesn't he stick to that instead of, you know, just going Donald Trump? Because he's Donald Trump. And, you know, there was a big sign at uh, Trump Towers in the beginning of the campaign that said, let Trump be Trump. Mm -hmm. And that's good to a point, but it's also bad to another point. Uh, he has brought on some some interesting people that I think uh, are pointing him in the right direction. But the bottom line is, he, you know, he, he's going to say what he's going to say. We've never had a politician like that. Uh, we've never had anyone be so politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that resonates with a lot of people. A lot of people see that he's honest and that he's going to speak you know, from the heart and shoot from the hip. And, you know, hopefully enough Americans, you know, like that. I know the political class absolutely detest him because of that. But maybe that's because they want someone programmed that they can keep under their control. And Donald Trump can't be controlled. How do you see uh, tomorrow night's uh, third and final debate going? Well, if I was advising the campaign... Uh, I would tell Donald Trump to write down the top 10 most egregious, incriminating, criminal WikiLeaks and Project Veritas videos, and I would know those notes inside and out like the back of my hand. I'd put them on a little piece of paper, mm -hmm. and when I got to the debate, I would whip them out in front of the American public because they are being kept from the American public because of our media, and I would show the American people exactly what is going on. I would pull the veil off of Hillary Clinton live on stage and absolutely destroy her with the information that's coming from her campaign and the DNC. That's what I would do. What could Trump do, in your opinion? What is it, uh, 21 days before the election? In order to tilt the balance of power, the balance of the electoral more to his side? Well, one thing he's been doing is um, he's been, he's not afraid to go and look for votes on Democratic turf. Mm -hmm. He's gone into Detroit. He's gone into St. Louis. He's gone into, uh, you know, Baltimore. He, he's gone into some areas that predominantly would not uh, be, you know, resonating with his message. 
But he's been able to go into those communities and tell them, look, you've had 50, 60 years of the same thing and it's not working. I want to better your communities. I want to better your families. I want to better your lives. Give me a shot and I'll do it. And I think that that is working because, you know, we've seen some polling that shows that he's way up with uh, minority voters and things like that. He's still got a ways to go because they're always going to believe the lies and keep them on the Democratic plantation because that's how they've been able to be for, you know, 75, 80 years. But some of them are going to jump Mm -hmm. off that plantation. And when they do, they'll go out there and vote for Donald Trump. And hopefully there's another. Do you think there's more to come from WikiLeaks? Oh, without a doubt there is. As a matter of fact, uh, Project Veritas, the other one that's releasing things, Mm -hmm. said that they're going to do something almost every day, almost every day. So, yeah, right up until the election. And, you know, the only people that they can blame is themselves. They're the ones that have the lack security. They're the ones that allow themselves to be hacked by whoever did it. And therefore, we are uncovering all the lies, the cheating, the corruption and the collusion, and hopefully it's going to be enough and enough Americans get a chance to see it, understand it, and go out and vote against it. What do you think would ha- will happen when Donald Trump is elected and he is sworn in as the president of the United States? How do you see his, his cabinet? Well, um, Mike Pence, uh, his VP, is a very yep. uh, pragmatic and smart, articulate um Washington person that really knows how to get things done. Um, I think you're looking at uh, your Secretary of State being possibly Newt Gingrich. Um, I think you're looking at your uh, Health and Human Services Secretary and or Surgeon General as Dr. Ben Carson. Um, I would love to see Judge Jeanine Pirro as uh, the you know Attorney General. the um, Attorney General, yep. if not Chris Christie, one one of those two. I think you're looking at Rudy Giuliani at the Department of Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of great folks that uh, are going to be capable of making the right changes and being put in the right position. We'll have to see what happens. All All I can hope and pray is that they go after Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. And the first thing I would do is I would revoke their passports immediately so they can't get away. Wow. Um, if Hillary does get the White House, would there be an advantage to having a former president and a pre- and a citizen uh, and a sitting president, a citizen president, sitting president in the in the White House holding the power? Absolutely not. In this case. They have been proven to have been impeached. Mm -hmm. They have been proven uh, to have sexually assaulted women. Um, They have been lying. They have uh, funded terrorist operations uh, from the WikiLeaks. So, no, as a matter of fact, if God forbid it happens, Hillary Clinton's vice president is not Tim Kaine. It's actually Vladimir Putin and uh, the Chinese leader and the Iranian Ayatollahs and everybody else and Assad because they have her emails. She is compromised. From a national security standpoint, she should be disqualified, of course, but she is a national security risk to not just America, but to Canada and Mexico and any other country around the world. She should not be in the position that she's in, but it just goes to show you the lack of moral clarity and value that the liberal left in America has. You know, uh, Josh, we've got about 45 seconds left. What are your final thoughts to the Exo Nation tonight? Well, I, I think that uh, the American people have a choice, as I said earlier, mm-hmm. and hopefully they're going to choose freedom and liberty and prosperity instead of globalism and, you know, tyranny and, and, and chains of, you know, economic slavery. Because that's what it would be. It would be we would turn into a banana republic, we'd turn into a socialist country, and eventually we'd be communist. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm pretty confident that uh, Donald Trump uh, is going to resonate enough with the American people. We've got to make sure that we stop the voter fraud, because certainly there's a lot of voter fraud. I'm actually working on a program right now for Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio, and Florida 
to get the bikers for Trump out to the polling stations in some of the areas That's a good to idea. make sure that we're not going to have voter fraud. I'm working on that as a grassroots effort behind the scenes. Chris, we've got to say so long for tonight, but I do want to thank you ever so much for coming on the show. I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Let's talk after the election. You got it. No problem. Anytime, any topic. All right. Thanks a lot, Josh. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to find out more about Josh Bernstein, www.joshbernsteinpoliticalwriter.com and another website, please check out amac.us. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away.